Welcome back to Blackthorn Prods. This is the first tutorial in a two-part series where we will create a quality multiplayer lobby system using Unity. We'll begin by connecting to an online server, which will then bring us to the scene where we can create rooms or join existing ones, which are listed right here. Once you're in the room, you'll be able to see who is in it with you and choose a unique character skin. This is a blueprint to allow players to experience your game with friends or strangers from all over the world. Lots of fascinating things to learn and cover here, but first, this video is sponsored by Xsola. They've recently created a powerful partner networking tool. For example, you could reach out to various YouTubers, offering them a revenue share if they promote your creation and successfully get people to buy it. You don't need to contact each one personally. Your program will be listed among others, ready to be joined by a massive community from 40 plus countries and territories. This is an easy to use and flexible system with lots of control over who gets access to your program, detailed performance indicators that show you how much revenue is being driven by each influencer in your community, and cherry on the cake, Exola handle all legal agreements and payouts. This is basically a golden marketing opportunity. Content creators help sell your work, and in return, get a small share of the pie. Everyone wins. Check out the link in the description where you can register a publisher account and start using the partner network. All right, so let's get right into it with step number one, which is to connect Photon to a brand new Unity project. So for those who don't know, Photon is a very popular service that lets us create quite easily and quickly multiplayer games inside of Unity. The first thing we need to do is to head over to the Unity Asset Store. That's assetstore.unity.com. In here, just search for Photon 2 and look out for the free version of Photon 2. Once you have found it, so you can click on the Add to My Assets button, then open it up inside of Unity you will see that Photon 2 has now appeared inside of the package manager. So now just download it and import that package into your project. Once you're done, you'll get prompted to add an app ID. So we need to create, first of all, a Photon app. Let's head over to photonengine.com. If you have an account, go ahead and sign in. Otherwise, go through the quick process to create a free account. Once you're logged in, go to the dashboards. This is the place where you can see all your existing Photon apps. Let's create a new one by clicking on this button here. We'll change the Photon type from Photon Real Time to Photon Pun, and then just name your app whatever you like. I'll call mine Blackthorn Prod Tutorial. Then just click Create. Now let's just copy the secret app ID of the app we just created. Back into the Unity, we will just paste it in here and click on the Setup button. Alright, perfect. Photon is now correctly installed and linked to our project. Step 2 is to create our first scene that lets us type in our username and then click on a button to connect us to the server. Once you've successfully connected, we'll get moved to the lobby scene. So we've went ahead and prepared this very simple little scene called Connect to Server. The scene basically just has two important elements, which is this input field for the username and this button. So now let's create a new empty game object that I'll call connect to server. Once it's been created, I will add to this object a brand new C Sharp script, also called connect to server. First thing to do is to import the photon.pun namespace so we can use all the multiplayer functionalities of photon within this script. We will also import the unityengine.ui namespace so we can access UI from the scripts. Let's then create two variables. The first one will be a public input field variable called username inputs, and the second will be a public text variable for the button text. So let's now create a public void function called onClickConnect. So we're going to want this function to get called when we click on our button. That's why we need to make this a public function. So we only want to connect to the server if we have typed in an actual username. So I'll quickly check if username input.text.length is greater or equal to 1. If that's the case, then we'll say photon network.nickname and we'll set it equal to username inputs.text. So this line basically sets this player's username, or nickname as Photon calls it, to whatever we typed in our input fields. 
Later on, we will be able to list all the players in a room and display their nicknames thanks to this line. Okay, moving on, once we click on the button, we would like to change the text of the button from connect to connecting, so that the player gets informed of what's happening, since the connection process can take a couple of seconds depending on your internet speeds. So I will simply say button text dot text and set it equal to connecting. Finally, the last line of code that we need inside of this function is the line that actually connects us to the Photon server. And that's extremely simple to do. We just need to type photonetwork.connect using settings. And that's it. Okay, so when we click on our button, we are going to call this function that will connect us to the Photon server. And as a quick reminder, a server is the essential element in any multiplayer game. It's what lets us pass information from player to player. We now need a way to know if we have successfully connected to the server, and if so, we would like to go to our next scene, which is the lobby. This is super simple to do. Let's just inherit from Mono Behavior pun callbacks. So a Photon callback is a special function that gets called automatically by Photon when a certain event happens. So in our case, we'll create the public override void on connected to master function. Note that the naming has to be exactly the same as mine's. As the name suggests, this function will get called automatically by Photon when we have successfully connected to the main server. And so in here, we just want to load our lobby scene. So I'll quickly come up to the top of my script and import the Unity engine management namespace. So that now we can type inside of our callback scenemanager.loadScene and I'll call my next scene lobby. And that's all the code that we need at the moment, so let's save the script and head over back to Unity. First of all, I'll drag and drop my input field and my button into their respective slots. I'll then select my button and add to it a on-click event. We can now drag and drop the connector server empty game object, then select the connector server script and find the on-click connect function that we created. I've also went ahead and made a completely empty scene called Lobby. Let's now go to File, Build Settings, and drag and drop both of my scenes in there. Okay, so let's press play. I'll type in my name and then click on the Connect button. And after a couple of moments, we'll get transitions to our empty Lobby scene, which means that we have successfully connected to the server. Great job. All right, so now step three is to be able to create a room inside of the Lobby. So we've went ahead and prepared the lobby scene a little bit. So inside of a canvas object, we've got two different empty game objects, the lobby panel and the room panel. At the moment, the room panel is deactivated so that we can only see the lobby panel. This panel has got another game object called the create section that just contains an input field so that we can type the name of the room that we want to create and a create button. If we now deactivate the lobby panel and activate the room panel, all we've got at the moment is a text element where we will read the name of the current room that we're in. Later on, this will be the place where we will be able to list the players that are in the room and select our characters. Okay, so the goal of step three is to be able to create a room. And in Photon, when we create a room, we automatically join the room that we created. So we will also want to deactivate the lobby panel and activate the room panel and display the name of the current room we are in. So with that said, I'll go ahead and create an empty game object called Lobby Manager. And once it has been created, I'll add to it a brand new c -sharp script also called Lobby Manager. We'll start off like the other scripts by importing the photon.pun namespace, but this time we'll also import the photon.realtime namespace that gives us some extra multiplayer functionalities to work with. And finally, I'll import the Unity Engine.UI namespace. Let's begin by creating a public input field variable that you guessed will store our create room input fields. We'll also create two public game object variables that will store both the lobby panel and the room panel so we can activate and deactivate them when we need. Lastly, I'll make a public text variable called room name they'll store the text elements that'll display the name of the current room we are in. Okay, so inside of the start function, so when the lobby scene loads up for the first time, we'll type photonetwork.joinLobby. 
we're doing this because we need to be inside of a photon lobby in order to create a room. Now let's create a public void on click create function that will get called whenever we click on our create button. In here, we'll first of all check if our create input.text.length is greater than or equal to 1. So we're just checking that the name of the room that we're trying to create is not empty. If it's not, then we will call the photon network .create room function. In here, we need to pass in the name of the room that we want to create. So I'll type create input.text. And there we go, it's as simple as that. We can also add room options to the room that we create. For example, we can assign a max number of players. So if you want your game to only allow three players max, then you can type new room options and set max players to three. Like I mentioned before, when we create a room, we automatically join the room that we created. So let's switch from the lobby panel to the room panel once we join the room. To do that, we're going to need a photon callback. So like for the previous script, I will inherit from monobehavior pun callbacks. This will give me access to the public override void on joint room function. As the name suggests, this function will get called automatically by Photon once we join a room, and so also when we create a room. In here, I will deactivate the lobby panel by saying lobby panel .set active false, and I will activate instead the room panel by saying room panel .set active true. Let's also set the room name .text to display the current name of the room we are in. To get that, we just need to type photon network .current room name. Let's also add before that the string room name. Okay, so that's all the code we need at the moment. So save the script and head over back to Unity. In here, I will assign all my public variables. So let's drag and drop the input field, both the lobby panel and the room panel, and of course the room name text inside of the respective slots. We also need to select our create button and add a on-click event to it. I'll then drag and drop my lobby manager object into this slot, then select the lobby manager script and find the on-click create function that we just created. And that's it. So now let's press play and test it out. So I'll call myself Liam and then connect to the server. And now I'll type in test for the room name and then click on the create button. Perfect, so we're now inside of the room panel and the name of the room is getting correctly displayed. Great work guys, let's keep this up. Okay, so step four is to display in the lobby the list of all the rooms that are currently available. So let's make a couple of changes to our lobby panel. Let's create a scroll view that I will call room list. Then just resize it and place it wherever you would like in your scene. We don't want to be able to scroll horizontally, so I will uncheck this horizontal checkbox as well as delete the horizontal scroll box. I'll replace this placeholder art with some art that we made. We also went ahead and created this room item button that we turned into a prefab. These are the elements that we will be spawning that will represent the different rooms that are available and that we can click on to join the room. So these room items are going to get instantiated inside of the viewport content object in our scroll view. The problem is that at the moment they are not displaying correctly since they are stacking one on top of the other. To fix this, we're going to add a vertical layout group component to the content object. And now you'll see that they are all getting displayed perfectly. I'm now going to add a new c -sharp script to my room item prefab called room item. This script will be in charge of displaying the correct room name for each room item and then later to join the correct room when we click on the button. So I'll start off by importing the unity engine.ui namespace. I'm going to create a public text variable called room name that will just store this room item's text. So let's create a public void function called set room name. They'll take in has a parameter, a string that I will call underscore room name. Then like the name of the function suggests, we will simply set our room name dot text to be equal to the underscore room name parameter. Okay, that's all we need to do in the script for the moment. Now inside of the lobby manager, we need to instantiate in our scroll view a room item for each room that is currently available. 
So we're going to create a public game object variable that will store our room item prefab. Then we'll create a list of room items that I will call room items list. Now I'll set it equal to a new list of room items. Finally, we'll make a public transform variable called content object that will store the object in our scroll view that we are going to parent our room items to. So to retrieve the list of all the available rooms, we're going to use the public override void on room list update callback function. Like the name suggests, this function gets called automatically by Photon whenever there has been a change in the room list. So whenever a room has been created, modified or destroyed, this function will get called. And we can retrieve the list of rooms thanks to this room list parameter. So inside of this callback, I will just call a function named update room list that I'll pass in as a parameter the room list that we have retrieved from the callback. So let's now create that void update room list function that takes in as a parameter a list of room infos called list. So inside the function, we want to do two things. The first step is to destroy all the current room items in the scene. And then the second step is to repopulate the scene with the newly updated room items. So I'll loop through my room items list with a for each loop. So for each room item, item, in room items list, we'll destroy item.gayobject. Once that is done, we'll just completely clear out our room items list by using the dot clear function on the list. Okay, so we have finished step one. All the old room items have been destroyed and the list is now completely empty. So now step two is to instantiate a room item for each room that is available. And then we also want to add that room into our list. So let's loop through the list of rooms that we retrieved from the photon callback. So for each room info room in list, we'll instantiate our room item prefab and as a second parameter, we can pass in a object that we want to be parented to. So I'll use my content object variable. We will store this newly instantiated room item inside of a room item variable called new room. That way I can now say new room dot set room name, which I remind you is the function we created a couple of moments ago. And we can pass in as a parameter room dot name, which refers to the name of the room we are iterating through at the moment. Finally, we'll add the new room to our room items list by using the dot add function on the list. So this bit of code is a little more complex than what we have done so far. But if you break it down and understand the technique we are using, it's pretty straightforward. We're just keeping a list of room items, and then each time we get an update from Photon, thanks to this on room list update callback function, we are just destroying all the current elements in our list and clearing the list out. And then we are instantiating a room item for each different room available, changing the name to the correct name and adding that new room into our list. Okay, so let's save the script and head over back to Unity. In here, I'll drag and drop the room item prefab inside of this slot, as well as the content object in my scroll view inside of this slot. Let's not forget to select our room item prefab and drag and drop the text element inside of the room name slot. Okay, so with that done, we can test if our system is working. To do so, I'll hit Ctrl B or Command B if you're on the Mac to create a build of the game that will simulate another player. So once both players have connected to the server, I'll create a room with this player called Test. And perfect, the other player can see that there is a new room available called Test. We are really advancing well on this little lobby project. So let's continue with step 5, which is to actually be able to click on a room item to join that room. So let's open up the room item scripts. We'll start off by creating a lobby manager variable called manager. Then inside of the start function, we'll set manager to be equal to find object of type lobby manager. This line will search our scene for the game object that has the lobby manager script attached to it. And it will store that component inside of the manager variable. Now let's create a public void function called onClickItem. This function will get called when we click on a room item. Inside of this function, I'll simply call manager.joinRoom, 
they'll pass in has a parameter or room name dot text. Now, of course, this function doesn't exist yet on our lobby manager. So let's go ahead and create it now. So I'll make a public void function called join room. They'll take in has a parameter, a string for the room name. All this function will do is call the photon network dot join room function. We will pass in the room name parameter since that's the name of the room we want to join. Then once we join a room, our on joined room callback function will get called and we will hide the lobby panel, show the room panel and modify the room text to the correct room's name. Okay, so let's save the script and head over back to Unity. If we select our room item prefab, we can add a on click event to it. Drag and drop our room item script and then select the join room function. Let's now test it out. So I'll create a room with this player called test and he goes straight to the room panel. Now with this player, the test room appears in a scroll view and if we click on it, we're also in the test room. That's some excellent progress guys. Okay, with step six, we want to be able to click on a button to leave the room we are currently in. So we went ahead and created this leave room button. Let's now open up our lobby manager scripts. I'm going to create a public void function called on click leave room. This is the function that will get called when we click on our button. In here, we'll simply call photon network dot leave room. It's as simple as that. Now let's use the public override void on left room callback function. As you probably guessed, this function will run automatically once we leave a room. In here, we'll want to deactivate the room panel and activate the lobby panel, so we want to go back to our lobby. Okay, so let's go back to Unity. I'll select my button and add a on-click event to it. Let's drag and drop the lobby panel and select our scripts, and then find the on-click leave room function. If we test it out, you'll see that we can nicely leave the current room that we are in and head over back to the lobby. However, if you test everything, you'll notice that there are some bugs. For example, if one player creates a room called A and the other player creates a room called B, and then that player leaves his room A, you'll notice that he doesn't see room B appear in the lobby. And there are a few more bugs like that. Thankfully for us, they're all very quickly solved. So step seven, which is our last step in this tutorial, is going to be about fixing these annoying bugs. So the first problem lies in the fact that when we create and join a room, we leave the photon lobby. But when we leave a room, so when we call this photon network dot leave room function, we don't join back the lobby. We simply get connected back to the photon server. And that's a problem since we need to be in a photon lobby in order to get updates about the current rooms available. To fix this, we'll add a public override void on connected to master callback function. And in it, so we'll join our lobby by saying photon network dot join lobby. Okay, so now when we leave our room, we get automatically connected to the photon master server, and so our callback will get called, and we will successfully rejoin our lobby. Great. The second problem is that for a unknown reason, sometimes the on room list update callback function gets called twice or more in a very quick succession, and that tends to bug the room list. So to be on the safe side, it's better that we add some kind of timer so that we only allow an update every 1.5 seconds, for example. So I'll create a public float variable called time between updates. Now set it to 1.5 seconds by default. Then let's create a float variable called next update time. So now in our room list update callback function, I'll check if the current time in the game, so time.time, .time, is greater than or equal to our next update time. If it is, then we are allowed to update our room lists. Now let's just set our next update time to be equal to the current time in the game plus our time between updates variable. And that's it. You should have now a completely working and bug-free lobby where you can set yourself a username, create rooms, check out the available rooms, join existing ones and leave the current room. But very soon, we'll be able to list the players which are in the room through this menu as well as customize their appearance. Finally, we'll spawn the players inside the game scene. Hopefully this tutorial was helpful. Remember to hit the like button and stay tuned for lots more game development content. Cheers!